there! My guest today is Yoshi Hibo. Yoshi, can you tell me uh, what's the origin of your name? Sure, Magda. Um, my name Yoshi Livo comes from the word, the phrase your children live on. I don't know if you're familiar with you only live once. Yes. Uh, it's a phrase that uh, people nowadays use when they do uh, something they enjoy and they enjoy it so much that they scream out you only live once and they f live to the fullest. Uh, I also used to live in that way in, uh, uh, until I started to think about uh, uh, what this system actually means that we live in. And um, I then developed the thought that uh, you don't just live once, but you also get children. You have kind of heritage that you pass on to them. Mm -hmm. So that's why I uh, came up with your children live on. And um, so you have you only live once, YOLO, and your children live on is ICLO. And if you take the first letters of your children live on, you get the name Yoshi Livo. Uh, and Yoshi in Japanese also means to continue. So uh, that's the reason why there is an S there. Um, and with did this thought, uh, your children live on, I try to inform the people about um, the, the lives they live and uh, the things that we do on this planet because I believe that if we start thinking about future generations, our state of being and our happiness can go to the next level and we can become much more happy than just uh, be happy about materialistic stuff. Okay, nice. Um, can you tell me what you in the, in the past uh, have done? Projects or something sure. like that? So when I dis uh, after I uh, established the name Yoshi Livo for myself, I felt the need to express my thoughts to other people. So uh, because in the end it's all about the majority of people. So I, they needed to be educa educated. That's how I felt. I, I wanted to talk about my feelings, my uh, stay, my mindset. And as Yoshi Livo, I have then traveled for a, over a year and participated in multiple projects. I also made a couple, a couple of projects myself. And uh, one of the projects I've been involved with was a student protest in Amsterdam, where students uh, um, uh, took over the main building of the University of Amsterdam because they felt like they were not being heard by the board of the university. The decision-making process wasn't transparent, wasn't democratic, and uh, I from, I personally feel that uh, transparency is a big uh, is, a, is a big issue for me. I want um, uh, transparency for every for everything basically. Um, so I have uh, uh, declared myself to be solidar with the students. Uh, I declared my solidarity with the students and. Um, uh, I then helped them with uh, small things like doing the dishes or cleaning uh, and but also uh, some things bigger like creating the new university of values which has a, a certain uh, uh, ideology that information should be shared freely instead of that you have to pay for uh, um, uh, research that has been done and also that not every value can be quantified. Um, from that uh, uh, protest, I've then traveled to Liberland. Liberland is a uh, new sovereign state between Serbia and Croatia, mm -hmm. and um, they uh, want to create a state based on libertarian principles, which basically means very small government and no interference from government with the people there. So, um, for Liberland, I have translated a lot of things. I uh, also uh, went to jail for the Liberland cause because I tried to set foot on Liberland and actually was there for a couple of hours until I got arrested by Croatia and then I had to spend 10 days in Croatian prison for, for illegal border crossing. Um, I also uh, developed the first international sports event for Liberland where I managed to get a Liberland team into a competition, into a rowing competition with teams from Croatia, Serbia and Hungary mm -hmm. and uh, it was a lot of fun, it was a great summer, I met a lot of interesting people and at some point uh, I was noticed in the Netherlands and people asked me to come and speak about 
the, uh, the Liberland project. So that's when I traveled back to Amsterdam to have a, uh, a speech about Liberland. A very funny fact, uh, detail is that this speech took place in one of the buildings of the University of Amsterdam, <laughs> which I squatted a couple of months earlier. So uh, after that speech, I uh, started to search for different projects and came in contact with Wonderland. Wonderland has uh, is the newest state on the planet, new so sovereign state on the planet, and they have uh, um, uh, handed over their declaration of independence to the United Nations on September 21st, uh, 2015. And um, what Wonderlands wants to provide for their people is a basic income. So a, uh, basically free money for everybody to live their basic, to, to, to provide for their basic needs like housing, uh, food, fresh water, stuff like that. Is that an unconditional basic income? Yes, so you will get that without anything to, to do for, basically. And uh, because um, I have an economic background, I used to be an auditor for large corporations where I made sure their tax payment was as low as possible. I believe that I, ha I, I kind of uh, thought of a system how to provide a basic income for Wonderland. And I believe that I can provide every Wonderland citizen with that basic income. And that was my task in Wonderland, besides managing the land there, because somebody needed to live in Wonderland, and uh, I like to do that. So uh, that's, uh, I, I have lived there for over two months, and uh, unfortunately um, uh, the, the police ended the occupation of the land. And since that moment, and that this is also the reason why we are having this interview, there has been no news being put out because the Wonderland group um, feels like they are not ready for the masses. Uh, I, however, am ready for the masses, so I want to keep on moving forward instead of standing still. And I basically, this is a heads up for everybody that is wondering what is happening to Wonderland, what is happening with Yoshi Livo or uh, the Electronic Gilder, because that's one of the uh, projects that uh, is involved with all the other projects. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's why I, I really want to uh, uh, s s uh, hand out this information, like what's going on, what is the future, what's the past. And um, to conclude, uh, I, I, or uh, one of the bigger projects that I'm involved in is uh, the eGilder, which is basically a Bitcoin ID for the Netherlands. And I strongly feel that if we want to make a change in the world, we should also change the money because if you accept donations only in the old money, the fiat money that they control, um, that the powers that be control, you will never be able to break out of their power structure. So uh, that's why I, uh, everywhere I go, I introduce the Electronic Gilder to the group of people and ask them to become a friend of Electronic Gilder to support the message of change. Did you manage to register the name Yoshi Livo? Uh, unfortunately, Magda, I have not been able to register a new natural person under the name Yoshi Livo. No. Um, I uh, really want to register it um, because I have, I have the feeling that a lot of people are still unfamiliar with what a natural person actually is. and. Uh, managing to register it and being able to identify myself with that name would make a big difference for all the people that don't see the change yet. Okay, can you uh, tell the difference? Uh, what is a natural person exactly? A natural person is what the government uses to communicate to when they communicate to you. So on the, uh, with, within the first three days after you were born, your father goes to the government and tells them that you have been born, they ask, then ask for the name and add a number to that name. And uh, if you are uh, stopped by the police, for example, and they ask you to identify yourself uh, and you show them the number that they've given you, you actually uh, tell them that you are their property and they can do whatever they want with you under their law, that is, of course. So, 
uh, if you sh uh, uh, identify yourself as a natural person, you don't have any more human rights because a natural person is not the same as a human being. So uh, a lot of people still believe that their natural person is their human being and they act on behalf of that because they are scared of being and, and, and for example pay uh, things or, or live by rules that are made for example something crazy like not smoking in a cafe. Um, these are all laws that apply to natural persons and uh, as long as we uh, identify ourselves with that natural person we are being kept in their power system. So uh, for me the reason to still register a natural person because why would I want that mm -hmm. if I am a human being is uh, mostly because uh, the people that still live in the old power structure hold a lot of value to a registration and uh, if I can show them that my natural person is uh, registered in for example Wonderland it will be a, a very strong uh, proof for people that don't see the change that is happening all over the globe all over the globe so I still want to register it although it would limit my freedom again uh, but it's more that I want to do it because everything I do is to inform others so I don't need the registration but others do so that's why I still uh, hope and have good hopes that in 2016 Yoshi Livo will really be born so okay I wish you all the luck of the world thank you for being here all right Maga thanks for having me